And welcome to another episode of Digging History and Honoring the Sacrifice. I'm James McCormick. And boy, it's nice to finally get back out in the woods and digging again. Been a long, hot summer, folks. We finally started to get some cooler weather, which is starting to kill off some of the weeds and make it a little bit less buggy, snaky, and weedy so that we can get out in the areas that I like to roam, which is in the backwoods of West Virginia. And I can tell you, we find some cool artifacts. And what's amazing is, is some of the things that we can pluck up out of the ground that tell a story from long ago. Now, some of the things that we find people would look at and say, well, what is that? That looks kind of like a piece of junk or that looks like something that, is, um, uh, that, that I've probably seen before. Well, I'm going to explain what each, what each one of these items are that I have sitting in front of me right now. And each and every one of them are super cool and tell a very good story. So let's start off, folks, with some of the items that I have right here in front of me, right here on this first row. Now, I want to start with this little, it looks like a small washer. Okay, so I'm going to hold it up and hopefully you can see it. Okay, now it's a tiny, tiny little device that is actually goes on the old ponchos of a Civil War soldier's poncho. And these were heavy, they were made out of canvas, and then they had these little eyelets that went around them so that you could tie ropes into them, tie it down, make a tent and they were covered with like a tar-like substance so that they wouldn't get wet. So that is a cool, super cool item. So if you find one of these, don't just chuck it in your trash bag because it is a piece of history. Now let's go into the buttons that I have found. And let me just explain something. Everything you see here, I found within a two hour period, two hours. I dug every single thing that you see here. Now, that doesn't always happen unless you come into what we commonly refer to, quote unquote, as a honey hole. And I hit a honey hole because I don't think I went out of an area much larger than this table. And I just continued to hit and dig and hit and dig and sift through the dirt and found some amazing, amazing artifacts. Let's go down here with these buttons. Now, the next button that I'm going to show you is not a whole button, but it's the back of a button. Now, it is a small cuff link button, and you'll see that all you can see is the little disc, but you can see the holes where there was a little clasp that went on there, and it connected. Now, it could have went to you know, on the uh, cuff link or maybe even on the side of a, a kepi. But you see those and you think, well, that's just something that's not real important. That is Civil War history. I'm going to pop into another one of those same type of buttons, but it comes off of the great coat, the large jacket, the coat, uh, the frock or the smock or whatever you want to call it, but the standard coat of the Civil War soldier. And you'll see that these buttons were made out of a brass type material and they're very, very fragile. So this is the back. So there's, they came in two sections. You had the top section that had the eagle that was on it. I'm going to show you some of those eagle buttons here in just a minute. And then you had the back and in the back it had a clasp. So let's go to an eagle button. All right, because I know you want to see that. And we'll get that camera in there so you can really see that eagle as best as we can. Um, but this is what they call a general service button. Now, that button came off of a Civil War soldier's uniform. Now, most of the uh, infantry guys, artillery and cavalry, they would have an I or a C or an A for artillery, but everybody else, the standard soldiers, had the little shield and they called it a general service button. I'm gonna show you another general service button. 
and it's right here. Now, this general service button, actually on the back is the part that I'm really wanting to look at. Because on the back, it shows you the maker's mark, where this button was made. And obviously, I have not cleaned it up. Uh, there is a cleaning process that we go through. It's time consuming, and you take your time with it because you don't want to bust these buttons. There's not many of them left. Now, let me show you one that got roached. I call it a roach button, but I can make out the eye. So this was an infantry coat button, but you, you're going to have a hard time seeing the eye on the front of it because it has absolutely been crushed. Uh, but you find these little buttons in various uh, you know, conditions, and here's one of them right here. So that is, you can see the eagle there at the top, and if you could, if you could be here where I'm at, and, and put a magnifying glass on it, you can see the top of an eye. But the cool thing about this button, while it is roached, it still has the little hasp, the clasp on the back that actually was sewed onto the coat of that Union soldier. And this is an enlisted soldier's uh, button. The officers had a more defined, higher raised button Latter parts of the war, you saw a lot of the, the officers, you know, they went to more of a, um, you know, a sack coat uh, is what they called it. Now, let's go to this other little item that I found. Now, when you first dig something like this up, you think, wow, is that the top of, a, of an old bottle or, a, or maybe a, a, a can? No. This, my friends, is the back of a watch. So this is a pocket watch. And now it's not one of the gold watches, but you can see right here is where the little fob went, where they twisted and they, uh, you know, and they changed the time on this thing. So this was most likely carried by some private or maybe a corporal or a sergeant, but this was carried by a soldier so that he could tell time. And, um, and that's just a cool thing to find. Now I want to move down to this. This is the most fragile thing that I have in this collection. Now it's going to be hard for us to get down to see it, but this is a model 1821 Civil War Infantry Officer's Hat Badge. Now, I dug this thing up in pieces. So here are the wings. So I'll hold those up. Um, and to see if we can get in there. Okay, yeah, there's the wings. You can make out the wings there. Okay, and then the head of the eagle came out of a hole. Look how tiny that is. It is so tiny, so fragile, but you can see where that eagle head was turned over, and now here's the shield, the most beautiful part of that. Well, I think it's a beautiful thing is right here. So you have the shield, you can see the shield in the middle, and I knew immediately when I dug that up, it was folded over as like someone took it and bent it over, and it was, it was like in a square, and I was able to clean it up and, and get it out and identify it as a Model 1821 Infantry Officer's hat badge. That's a cool find, folks. So if you can imagine, this thing is pressed brass. It is, it is very fragile. And what I will do with this is once we go through a painstaking process of cleaning it, then I'm going to put it all together, get it as close as I can, and then put it in some sort of a container where it can be displayed. Um, I think that that's important because this is also showing the various, you know, the decay that's occurring. Why it's important to get the artifacts out of the ground and get them on display because they're going to be gone and they're going to be gone forever. Uh, the next thing I want to bring you to has to do with shoulder scales. Now, this one broke on me, uh, in which they normally do. And what this is, is, is this is a clasp, okay? Uh, and what this was used for was to connect it to an epaulet on the shoulder. And it was sewn 
on to the shoulder of the Union soldiers. Some cases, officers had these where they would put their epaulets up there or whatnot. But how I know that this came from shoulder scales, and if you want to research Civil War shoulder scales, you'll find that it's a massive um, um, device that was worn on the shoulders of the Civil War soldiers. And this piece right here, okay, this is what went underneath. Now, obviously, it's bent, okay? And let me fold it over here. It's bent, so I'm not going to try to unbend it, but this was flat. This connected either to a button would go through here, or it was connected to this little clasp. And it attached to the shoulder, and you would have these metal brass heavy scales that sit on the shoulders of these soldiers. Now, I've heard many things said about shoulder scales. I wasn't alive during the Civil War, but I have heard people say that they got rid of them fairly quickly for a couple reasons. Number one, it was hard for them to carry, to shoulder their rifle with those big scales up there. They'd get caught, they'd get broke, and I have found several shoulder scales and pieces of shoulder scales all over battlefields and campsite areas, mainly campsite areas. But some people say that it was designed to protect the shoulder from a saber strike. Did it happen? I don't know. But I can tell you there's a lot of stories out there. Uh, and because I wasn't there, I'm not going to be able to, to really tell you the facts on that. I do know that they did have a purpose for that, was to protect for the shoulder strikes. But eventually the soldiers got rid of them because of the weight and because they just weren't functional. Same thing with the eagle breastplate. You saw a lot of those in the beginning of the war, but the eagle breastplate was shined up and it became an excellent target for Confederates and they were aiming at the eagle breastplate. And you'll go to several early Civil War battlefields and you will find these uh, eagle breastplates. There's many of them on display that have a bullet lodged in them or a bullet hole in them. So let's move to the bullets. I want to specifically focus on one type of bullet. We've got plenty of three ringers. We've talked about three ringers, 58 caliber three, ring, three ringers. I want to talk about the Williams cleaner. That's what it's commonly referred to. The Williams cleaner bullet. And I'm going to hold one of these up that is incomplete. It is totally complete. And I'm going to show you something on the tip of this bullet. And then I'm going to go into a little bit of history about this bullet because I want you to understand it. This bullet, if you look at the top, there's a really fascinating thing. You see that hole right there? That hole was made from a worm. A worm is a little screw that they screwed down. So this bullet was loaded and ready to fire and the soldier came back and put a worm in there and pulled the bullet out. Sometimes they just shot them out. But if they were in a camp situation or they had, you know, maybe the weapon was, was broken or it needed servicing, they would pull this thing out. The Williams cleaner is part lead, part zinc. This little disc on the bottom is made of zinc. And I'm going to show you several of them that I found here. Whenever you fire the, the standard conical bullet, the three ring bullet, because it went through the, the, the barrel, it was often fouling up. It was often fouling up the barrel uh, because it didn't expand enough to pull out the powder and the residue that would collectively collect in the bullet. So this had an effect <clears throat> on shooting. So Williams came up with this bullet, patterned this bullet in 1861. They were all over the battlefield by 1862 by the Union forces primarily, 99% of the time, just to be honest with you. Um, the Union soldiers did not like them for two reasons. Number one, they kicked like a mule. 
when you fired this. And I know that for a fact because I have personally fired a Williams cleaner bullet out of a 58 caliber infield. And I can tell you that that bullet uh, packs some punch. So when that bullet would be fired, it would expand this zinc on the end and it would pull through the barrel and the, the design was to take out some of the fouling and the excess residue that would get caught up in the powder. When you're out digging in a battlefield scenario, you're gonna find little things like this right here. Now I took some kids out digging and they dug up a bunch of these and they said, wow, these looks like somebody cut the nail off of, cut the head off of a nail. Well, no, these came out of a Civil War bullet. And in most cases, the soldiers ditched these bullets and a lot of times you'll find them in various arrangements. They made them into chess pieces a lot of times. And I've got several bullets here to look at. So why do I tell you all this? I want you to be able to identify what you find whenever you're digging, especially in the Civil War era. It's very important, folks, that we know what we have. And then once you get it, how to take care of it, and then look for those little key things, like that little drill hole in the top that tells you that that soldier had to handle that bullet twice. So, I got a little bit of footage in the field from where we found the, all of this stuff, and I want you to sit back and watch it, and we'll be right back with more Digging History. Okay, Digging History fans, I'm out here with my Nocta Macro Legend, and I haven't found one of these in a long time. It is a button, and it's a good looking button too. I think it's general service. Definitely an eagle button. Yep, general service. Beautiful large coat button. That is awesome. <laughs> Can't find it sitting on the couch, folks. I'll clean it up later. But uh, beautiful Civil War button. Beautiful. Okay, folks, having a phenomenal day here. I'm just in a little area, probably 100 square feet. And now I've found this. Now, this doesn't look like anything, but this came off of the back of a of shoulder scales. Okay, and they were worn early in the war, and then by later in the war, the soldiers got rid of them. And you find these discarded everywhere. So I have found four Williams cleaner bullets and half a dozen of the Williams cleaner ends, you know, they're a little piece of lead, and I'll, I'll show you one right now. Um, give me one second here. It's, it looks a little bit like a button, but it's not a button, and uh, so don't be tricked into thinking that it is. It's not. Okay, you find these all over the place, and the soldiers hated the Williams cleaner bullets, so they would chuck them, or they would pull them, and they would carve the bullets into chess pieces, I find them discarded all the time. So anyways, there it is. And it was designed to help clean the barrel. So, all right, folks, keep watching on Digging History. Okay, folks, first decent little find in a while. It's this little buckle. And uh, it's actually pretty old. It probably dates back to the uh, to the to the 1800s for sure, 1860. So it definitely could have been left here uh, by some of the Civil War soldiers that were housed here in this park. Very cool. Very glad to find that. Haven't been out much here lately, but I decided to get out today, and thankfully I did. Good find. All right there, Digging History fans. Let's see. It is 649. I have been searching for exactly two hours. Well, let's see here. Uh, yeah, about two hours and 15 minutes. It's starting to get dark, so we can't, I can't do any more digging. But 
Look at this hall that I had today. Unbelievable. Civil War relic hall today. So, let's just look here. Let's start off with the cool stuff. Civil War button, Civil War button, Civil War button. Back of a Civil War button. Back of a, you know, another button uh, for the cufflink button. This right here, um, I have to look at it and, but I think it's part of a hat badge and it's got an eagle wing on it. So I, you can see it right there. That's a wing for an eagle. So um, it's not all there, but I've got to kind of look at it a little bit, but that would be a hat badge with an eagle, some sort of an eagle design on it. And then of course, um, you know, these are little buttons that went on that were sewed into their um, um, ponchos. So let's go to the bullets. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 bullets. And then the backs of one, two, three, four, five, Williams cleaners. Nice bullet fragment there. Uh, that I found. I, I had a lot of bullet signals, friends, but I don't dig them all because when I come on to a big place like this, I like to be able to bring kids and people that have never found a Civil War bullet before. I can take you here and I guarantee you I can put you on some Civil War relics. Now let's move over here to the other stuff. If you remember earlier, wait for the airplane. If you remember earlier, I was telling you about this. This is a clip that went on a shoulder. Uh, they call them shoulder scales. Well, here's a part of the shoulder scales. Now, I cannot bend this out straight, but this would have been straight. This would have had, um, they would have been like discs that went all the way down. And it was designed, you know, some of it, some people say it was, you know, for looks, but I would, I have heard that it also protected you from saber strikes uh, on the shoulder okay this is the back of a pocket watch really old uh, not a uh, uh, you know obviously not a gold watch but this is something that some common soldier was carrying around this is how he kept time nice pieces of glass these are definitely you know probably civil war pop skull or some uh, whiskey glass this is more like a medicine bottle of some sort um, this is a washer, very common, uh, some sort of a piece of pipe. When I first dug it, I thought maybe it might have been um, a pistol barrel, but it's not. A uh, piece of band, old can, then obviously some square nails, which are common. Found one beer tab and one 12 gauge shotgun bullet. And then I found this, uh, this right here. So Civil War soldiers, you know, they, they, they've been eating oysters for a long time, folks. So don't think you're the only ones that have eaten oysters. So some Civil War soldier, you know, this was uh, this was a meal for him. So there it is. So three really good buttons, uh, a couple of parts of buttons, and lots of bullets, lots of stuff. And I took trash out of here, so that's always a good thing. I've got this wonderful display case. Um, that I put together for Vitaly at Fellman Steel uh, down in New Haven, West Virginia. And Vitaly is the plant manager there. He's a great guy. And they had owned some property and gave me permission. I made a whole series of videos on these items that I found. Now, obviously, I didn't find these items uh, with my metal detector, but as most metal detectorists will tell you that sometimes you find really cool pieces of pottery and china and in this case, there's three really cool pieces the face of an old porcelain doll a teacup handle and the bottom of a plate um, As you can see this rat tail file. I just left it in the condition I, I knocked off some of the dirt and the dust and stuff so uh, you'll also see that I made a list of all of these items and I went through and, and of course I researched these items. So I have a pretty good idea what dates they all come from. With the oldest item that I have in here, it appears to be the bottom of this china plate right here. And with the blue markings, 
you sometimes can find some of these plates go all the way back to the 1700s, but I believe from what I can find, this is probably around 1840, 1845 time period. Now this is a cool little piece and it's smashed and I didn't try to put it back into shape, but this is actually um, the top of a knife handle or possibly um, one of the, um, the bayonets. Now, because I found 258 caliber fired um, bullets there, and I did find some things, other things some that I don't have displayed that, that potentially could mean that there was a camp there. Uh, I'm, I highly suspect that this came off of uh, one of the spike bayonets, probably an infield or a Springfield bayonet. I, I've looked and tried to find that specific part, and I can't find it. Um, over here is the newest item that I have, and this is this is basically a, a belt keeper, um, some sort of a strap holder, and it's bent, but it's brass, and you can tell it's been mass manufactured. But I'm going to guess somewhere around the 1900s, 1920s, latest. And then washers. You know, I did some research on washers, and you're going to find out that washers have been used for hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, except for the locking washers. Then if you start to see a locking washer, you're going to find that those are more like after 1950. But but this washer in particular, uh, where I found some other parts of off of uh, an old wagon. So I highly suspect that this had something to do with a wagon. I'm not sure if it came off the wheel or something. I'm, I'm not sure. I don't think it's big enough to come off of the wheel itself. Um, and of course, horse tack. Uh, we call that horse tack. This is a brass ring. This came off of uh, probably a single tree. It was pulled by a, a mule or a horse. Uh, chain from a bridle, which is cool. This spoon is really cool. Uh, and I'm very lucky that I was able to find both pieces of that. And obviously, it's been broken. Uh, these lantern parts. Here's two different lantern parts. This is a larger one. This is a smaller one. This is most likely something you would see in somebody's bedroom or their uh, or their house. 1850s, 1860s, something like that time period. So look, some of these are really cool, you know, cool items. But it's going to be so much cooler in a place where lots and lots of people are going to see it and be able to study about history. That is what we do. And welcome back, and we hope you enjoyed the video footage from the, the field, folks. Remember to like, subscribe, and always watch us for more interesting videos and tips from Digging History and Honoring the Sacrifice. Remember, folks, if you can't find anything sitting on the couch, get up and get to digging. Catch you later.